One thing I get asked about pretty often is, other than how based my taste is, how someone can learn how to ethically hack. War Games by OverTheWire.com has games to learn Linux, web security, cryptography, and reverse engineering. I'm going to do the first 10 levels of Nottis, since web security seems to be what you guys are into. Nottis teaches the basics of server-side web security. Each level of Nottis consists of its own website located here. Each level has access to the password in the next level. All passwords are stored here. Well, let's get started. Oh yeah, we won't need a zap proxy for these early levels. Not a zero, not a zero. So here we just have a basic web page. You can find the password for the next level on this page. So we're gonna press the hacker button, F12, on the keyboard and open the console. Nothing here. So we're gonna go to elements. Anything in the header? Nope. So it's probably just here in the body. And yep, comment it out. We see the password for Nottis1. Congrats, you're officially a cybersecurity expert. Go get a job. Nottis, one and done. So here we have another basic page. You can find the password for the next level on this page, but right clicking has been blocked. Okay, so maybe I jumped the gun last time by pressing F12, but it really goes to show that they want to teach you everything about web security from the basics. So F12 again, look at the content, and there's the password for Nottis too. And so we have another basic page again, but this time it says there's nothing on this page, which is already a lie. But let's press F12 and make sure. I should probably take a look at this button real quick. Okay, this is just a leaderboard, so if you want to sign up, you can keep track of your score and stuff. But going back to this, we actually see that there is something on this page. A small PNG of a pixel. And we see a source for the image. In the URL, we have a directory called files. So if we type in slash files at the end of the URL, it should take us somewhere. Users.txt, huh? Let's see what's in there. So already it's making a point to show us how web directories work. Not as three, baby. There is nothing on this page. Wow, there really isn't, huh? Not even like a PNG of a pixel. Does it have a files directory? Nope. Hmm. No more information leaks. Not even Google will find it this time. Okay, so by name dropping Google, it's trying to give us a hint. Search engines use a program called a web crawler to scour sites for information, but obviously there's things that the site doesn't want the crawler to see. So it'll include a robots.txt file that'll tell the crawler what not to access. So I feel like if we go to the robots.txt file, we get another clue. Disallow secret. Okay, so this is the directory that Google isn't allowed to find. And we'll just replace robots.txt with this. Oh yeah, that looks familiar. And there's the password for Nottis4. Access disallowed. You're visiting from blank while authorized users should only come from here. Okay, so what this is telling us is that it can track who or what we are. And one of the ways that websites do this is by looking at your HTTP request header. So you'll see the term header used all over IT, whether it's a TCP header or an HTTP header. But basically what a header is, is an instruction set for how to use data in a payload. For example, TCP headers show how data needs to be moved through a network with a source and a destination, among other things. In an HTTP header, however, you can actually edit the referrer or the portion that's where the data came from. So here we're going to open our terminal and use the curl command, which retrieves the raw data of a web page without the need for a browser. Dash u for user Nottis4, then followed by a colon for our Nottis4 password. This backslash is just to separate each line because you always want clean code. And for the string in the header, we're going to put the URL it gives us. And the last line will be the URL for Nottis4. Access granted. The password for Nottis5 is this. Access disallowed, you are not logged in. So you may already know about this through a bunch of YouTubers that have been hacked recently, but the way that a site tracks if you're logged in or not is through pieces of data stored in the browser called cookies. So if you go to the application tab, you can actually see your cookies that are stored and what values they have. So here we have a big zero for false, so we'll switch it to a one and see what happens. Access granted, the password for not a six. This is actually pretty easy input secret. Okay, so now we have a text box and an actual link to view the source code. Let's take a look at the source code first. Include slash secret dot ink. Okay, so these question mark tags actually indicate a PHP script and dot ink is just a file extension. So I wonder if this is just another web directory. Okay, it is. And there's our secret. All right, not a seven. Uh, home and about. This is the front page. Thanks. This is the about page. 
All right, so I'm getting memed on pretty hard here, but let's see what the console has to say. Nothing here, and oh, it's just telling me where it is. Why would they do that? We've already done this whole press F12 and get the password thing. What? Hmm. I wonder what happens if we put it after this page parameter. Nice. All right, another one of these input secret screens and a view source code option. Let's look at the source code. Encoded secret. Okay, so the secret is right here, but it's encoded. All encoding is is basically how computers interpret text. So if you've ever heard of ASCII, that's an encoding method. So we have binary to hex, not sure what strev is, and that's encoded in base64. So we just need to decode it from base64, take the hex data, convert it to binary, then convert the binary to a string. Pretty convoluted, but enough to understand. Base64 decoder. Copy this, paste. Uh, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I actually got pretty lost on this one, so I'm gonna Google the problem to figure out how to solve it. The PHP function takes a string, base64 encodes it, I know that, reverses it. Oh, that's what Strev is. Should have Googled that to begin with, honestly. I mean, that still doesn't explain why the output was messed up when I converted it. Well, maybe it does. How to reverse it. Convert the string back to binary, reverse the binary to string, decode the base 64. Oh, so I was doing it backwards? Huh. Well, I'm not going to Google a bunch of websites to reverse strings and stuff, but I will write some Python to do it for me. Hello, Thani. Haven't seen you since my first semester of college. Binary to ASCII library Python. Okay, so it actually has a bunch of stuff in this library that we need. Converting to base64, unhexify. Okay, so we can basically just use this entire library for everything. Import binasci, import base64, and I'll just comment out some pseudocode. We'll need the encoded secret, hex bits to string, and decode base64. And that's what this looks like. Can you guess which part was written by Claude? And this is what we get for the password. I hope this works because I have been here for hours. Go back here, paste the output from our script. <laughs> Let's go. Now it's nine, I'm feeling fine. Find words containing blank. Let's see the source code. If array key exists, needle request. If array key doesn't exist, pass through grep. Oh, okay. I can redeem myself on this one because I think I know exactly what they want us to do. Grep is a Linux shell command. It lets you query for the text in a line. So we're not looking through the web directory anymore. We actually have to access the directory of the server that is apparently running Linux. So like, for example, we have dictionary.txt we can access. And basically, if we search for anything in the dictionary, it will return the results from dictionary.txt. But we need to get to the server itself. So we need to break this search box or escape from it. And the only way to do that is with an escape character. In PHP, semicolon indicates the end of a statement. So if we type one in here, followed by a Linux command, let's just do ls, it should list the files in the directory, not just whatever is in the dictionary.txt file. Okay, nice. So that was a good test, but now we actually need to have it list what's in the full directory. So at the beginning, it stated all passwords were listed in a specific directory. And if we just copy this and tell it to list the files in the directory, there we go. Now we can do another command called cat, which is short for concatenate, and it just prints the contents of a file to a screen. So we'll cat not as 10, and there we go. Let's see if that's it. Not as 10, we win again. Well guys, I'll stop it here for now, but it really just goes to show that you don't need a bunch of money or online courses or gurus to learn web security. And if you wanna take a crack at it yourself, just go to overthewire.org and I'll see you guys in the next one.